you a little story that a friend of mine, Guy Eaton, an author from England, told me and insists that it's a true story. He had a, uh, a friend who was a theologian and an avid British gardener, and he had a new neighbor move in, and he was gardening. And so the neighbor came out, introduced himself, and said, what do you do? He said, I'm a theologian. To which the neighbor replied, I'm an atheist. And so at that point, the theologian asked him, have you, have you read St. Augustine? No. Have you read uh, St. Thomas Aquinas on God? No. What about Meister Eckhart or Julian of Norwich? No. Perhaps you've read some of the Eastern philosophers, Mamoinides or Averroes or Avicenna, maybe Ghazali, Razes? No. I haven't read them either. What about some of the moderns, uh, Plentiga or uh, Kraft or maybe William Craig? Don't know them either. He said, sir, you are not an atheist, you're an ignoramus. <laughs> so I, th I think the anecdote reveals something about people today who glibly dismiss belief in God as inherently unreasonable. And yet, they'll, they'll say, I don't believe in God without ever looking at some of the arguments. The same people, however, will believe in things like quarks and neutrinos. They'll believe in, in dark matter. And they won't know the science that substantiates belief in those things. Uh, they simply trust the scientists that, that uh, believe in such phenomena that we can't see. Uh, we have theologians also that have their arguments for believing in the things that they don't see. And just like most people believe in scientists without really knowing their proofs, many believers, simple people, believe what their teachers and their philosophers tell them without having the proof. So we forget that the age of science is also an age of faith, just like the age of faith was actually also an age of science. And something that we forget is that the epistemology of trust is foundational uh, in, in, in our world. In the classical period of Muslims,